What's happening guys, this is James Blonde with MMOheads.com with a quick weekly recap for MMO news and announcements for the week ending October 28th, 2013. And with our first bit of news this week, Killer Combo drops in with a Halloween special for Elsword like no other. This year Elsword introduces a brand new Halloween themed dungeon, the Halloween Banquet Room, where players will face monsters unique to the dungeon with Halloween rewards in the form of crazy looking costumes. Other than the new dungeon, there are plenty of special events and activities happening all month long in Elsword that will get players into the Halloween spirit, such as the Hollow Weird happenings and the Shadow Incubus and Grace Fairy costumes they just added in. Next up, it's been a while, but Hi Res Studios finally followed up with a rework of Sung Wukong and Smite. And let me just say that it's a huge improvement in every category. Visually, it looks very intimidating, probably one of the best looking gods so far, if not the best. But his new skills offer up some really fun looking gameplay tactics as well. With 72 transformations, one of his newest skills, he can transform into an eagle, tiger, or ox as a selection made from the ground targeter then charges forward towards his enemy. The eagle is the fastest to deal damage and the tiger mauls the first enemy he hits, stunning them and causing them plenty of damage, whereas the ox just plain plows through groups of enemies knocking them out to the side. And his ulti is cool as well, he leaps onto a cloud leaving a decoy on the ground fighting his enemy. While he's still up on his cloud regenerating health, he has the choice of leaping down onto the enemy dealing damage that way. So yeah, he's definitely come a long way from looking a lot like, you know, Poon Bats does now, but that's not the only new content Smite rolled out last week. They've also introduced leagues and their seasons, which are actually monthly instead of yearly like League of Legends, but it's similarly broken up into bronze, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond tiers, with everyone starting out in bronze league. And they've also changed the mastery just a bit to give players incentive to participate in the leagues by offering a slightly larger worshipper payout for playing. It's a pretty decent size update. And on a similar note, League of Legends is making some major changes to vision and support champions for Season 4. Two new posts went public last week on the official League of Legends forums discussing major changes to take the burden of warding off of supports and placing it on the entire team by offering a new item that allows players to either ward or fight enemy wards while limiting the total number of wards that can be placed on the map at any given time. It's pretty drastic stuff, so you'll definitely want to check the link in the description below to get all the details. Atlantica Online introduced the Goddess of Storms last week as the latest mercenary. They call her Stormcaller, and her mastery of the whip, the newest weapon in the game, and lightning magic make her a nearly unstoppable force. She kind of reminds me of the Whipper from Scarlet Blade, to be honest, but to go along with the new mercenary is Time Rift, the newest dungeon in the game, which, of course, is time sensitive and complete with zones for both level 100 and level 150 characters. Next up, we've got a debut video introducing Albion Online, a new free-to-play cross-platform sandbox MMORPG where players have complete control over crafting and housing along with territory control with a nice, balanced, rock-paper-scissors combat system. Not to mention a player-driven economy. The graphics in the game look a bit cartoony, but at the same time, they're clean. Plus, it's nice that you can be playing on your PC, then later pick up where you left off on your iPad. In the game, it's up to players to work together with other players, determining their role in individual groups in order to conquer new territories. Oddly enough, it's both simple and complex at the same time. It's simple enough to play on a tablet, but complex enough to be considered a worthy sandbox game with territory battles. Check out the introduction trailer to get a better idea on the game. It's actually, it seems pretty cool. Lots of news having to do with Rift this past week and early this week. Last week it was announced abruptly that Tryon Worlds is no longer supporting the Russian version of Rift. Yeah, just kind of out of the blue there. Okay, so there is some reason behind it based around the local publisher, but plenty of Russian players have migrated over the European server several months ago because the Russian version had not switched over to the new free-to-play version on their server. So that's simply what other Russian players will do now that they don't have a localized version. This week, however, Tryon announced that Rift is coming to Steam, along with three exclusive packs for purchasing, giving players exclusive mounts and items. Also, on top of all that, they too are celebrating Halloween with some pretty cool gear and mounts worth checking out. And of course, Microvolts gets seasonal with Halloween-themed weapons, costumes, and parts in the new Apex Predator update. Two Signature Edition toys were added as well, Shark Knife and Orca Sword. Those are pretty cool names, actually. Both of which have complete superhero and supervillain backgrounds. Other than that, the costumes this year overall look pretty sweet. 
Fiesta Online just launched their Halloween celebration trailer, showing off the eerie transformation of the in-game towns. This year, players can dress up as their favorite monsters, collect all the sinister sweets they can find, and freak out their friends. Then, you can check out the new Halloween Challenge dungeon filled with fiery pumpkins and in-game rewards. There's also a huge in-game event going on that summons players to hunt down the Headless, an outlaw consumed by demonic forces. There seems to be plenty of Halloween events going on right now, so head over to MMOHuts.com to find out what's going on in nearly all free-to-play MMOs. And finally, for our last bit of news, which also has to do with the Halloween celebration, the mighty quest for epic loot is celebrating Halloween by having an open house, also known as open beta, starting today, October 28th through November 4th, which means that anyone can sign up to play, no need for a key. Not to mention, some of the Halloween costumes will be exclusive to players who join in during the open house. Plus, a lot of the times during these open house events, they grant select players permanent access to the beta, which is always nice. But anyway guys, that's about it for MMO news and announcements for this week. Like always, if you're looking for more information about the news featured in the recap, check the links in the description below, then head over to MMOHuts.com slash news. Feel free to discuss the news in the comments below, or head over to MMOHuts.com slash forums. But until next time guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there gamers. <laughs>